Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalin. Today I'd like to talk about Prem's algorithm for finding minimum spanning trees. Before we get into the algorithm itself, we need to understand what the problem is that we're trying to solve. So what is a minimum spanning tree? What are we trying to do? Well, given a connected, undirected graph, we're trying to find the connected graph that has all of the vertices, so all V of those vertices, but only V minus one edges, a tree. So in other words, this is the minimum number of edges we can have. That's a spanning tree. In addition, we want the lowest possible cost for those edges, which gives us the minimum spanning tree. So this is useful for a variety of problems where what we're interested in is how to connect our vertices with the minimum cost. There are two well-known algorithms for solving this problem. Today I'm going to talk about Prim's algorithm, and in my next video I'm going to talk about Kruskal's algorithm. Prim's is really very similar to Dijkstra's algorithm when we implement it with a priority queue. The difference is that our focus is not on paths, but on the cost of each individual edge. So instead of ordering our priority queue by the total cost back to some starting point, we're simply going to order the priority queue by the cost of this edge. Otherwise, things are going to be very similar. We're going to pick a starting vertex. Doesn't really matter which one for this purpose. We're going to add edges to our priority queue only if the other vertex of the edge is not yet part of our tree. So whenever we add a vertex to our tree, we're going to look at all the edges out of that vertex, including only the ones where we're getting somewhere new. So that's very similar. We're going to stop when everything is in the tree. So that's similar to stopping when we found paths to all the other vertices. Or if the priority queue is empty, which in this case would mean that we don't actually have a connected graph. So what are we actually looking for? We're looking for a list of the edges that define this minimum spanning tree, and generally what the cost of the tree is. So that's our goal. What are the edges? What do they cost? So we're going to use information very similar, again, to Dijkstra's using the priority queue. This time we don't have path and cost arrays, but we do have edge and cost arrays. In this case, I'm just going to show the starting edge for each um, of these vertices when they get added. We don't necessarily keep this in an array based on the vertex. We may just create a list as we go, but we definitely need costs for each of those edges. And we need to know for each vertex, have we included it in the tree yet? Then of course our priority queue will still need to know what are the two vertices at the end of the edge and what's the cost of that edge. We're going to go ahead and take A as our starting point. Notice, however, that in general, we'll end up with the same tree, or at least with a tree with exactly the same cost, no matter where in the graph we start. So if we started from A, the very beginning of this is going to look very much like Dijkstra's. We're adding each of these edges out of A to our priority queue. And the same information is going in because, of course, our initial edges were the same as our paths. We'll check our loop conditions. We haven't stopped. We'll pull AC for two off. I'm noting in the graph as we add edges to the tree, I've changed the color of those edges so that we can see our spanning tree as we're building it up. Then we'll go through and we'll handle the edges out of C. So of course we don't do anything about the edge from C to A, we've already got A in our tree. When we handle the edge from C to F, now notice we're not putting in a path cost here, we're putting in the cost of that one edge because that's what matters for this problem. So we put in CF for eight and CG for three. That's all of our edges out of C. So we'll check our loop conditions and then move on to take the first thing off of our priority queue, which in this case will be CG for three. 
We then start handling edges out of G, starting with GC, which of course doesn't get us anywhere. GA doesn't get us anywhere. Both of those things we already had in our tree. GD does give us a new vertex that we don't yet have in our tree. So we add that to our priority queue. And the same for GJ. Now notice in each of these cases, the value going into the priority queue that we're ordering on is just the cost of that one edge. Check the loop conditions and handle our next smallest item from the priority queue. So this is going to be AB for four. So we add that to our tree, start handling edges out of it. We've got two of them. A, of course, we already have in our spanning tree. But D, we do not yet have in our spanning tree. So we now add BD, which is now the smallest edge, of course, that we have available to us. Check our loop conditions. And then we'll add that BD edge to our tree. And look at the edges out of it. So, of course, B is already part of our spanning tree. G is already part of our spanning tree. H is not, so we put H into the priority queue and check our loop conditions. Smallest thing now is our edge from G to J for four. So we add that to our tree and start looking at its edges. So J to F for three, we add to the queue. G we already have in our tree, so that doesn't do anything. And J to H for two, we add to our queue. That's all the edges out of J, so we check our loop conditions and pull the next edge off of our priority queue. This will be J H for two. So we update that, check its edges. Both D and J are already in our tree, so neither of those gets any action. And we're back to checking our loop conditions. We once again remove the smallest item from our priority queue. That's our J to F for three. And that gave us all of our vertices in the spanning tree. We'll check that and stop our loop. So we found the minimum spanning tree we were looking for, which includes edges A, B, A, C, B, D, J, F, C, G, J, H, and G, J. And if we look at the total cost of those edges, it sums up to 20. That is our goal. We have our minimum spanning tree. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time when we talk about Kruskal's algorithm for finding a minimum spanning tree.